Hey, so I went to chat GPT and I said, hey, let's see if chat GPT can write some basic Python code for me. Nothing too complex, but still something interesting. Perhaps you can use it for boilerplate. Let's see if you can identify the one huge aspect of this example of chat GPT writing code. Let's see if you could pick up on it. So here we are. I start with this at chat GPT. I say, write me a person class in Python with the typical characteristics of a person, then instantiate the object and have it announce itself with a print statement. So that's number one. So the chat GPT answers. Certainly, here's a person class in Python with the typical characteristics of a person. It definitely inits and creates the person class in Python. Not bad. And then give some instructions down here. So we go to the next screenshot. So chat GPT continues. To instantiate the object and have it announce itself, you can do the following. So it actually breaks down the code a little bit. So it gives us the code here in Python. This would create a new person object with the name Alice, age 30, and gender female. And then call the announce method to print the following statement. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. So this is pretty cool stuff. If you're learning to write Python code, it's interesting. You could get some Python code generated. It will give you some explanation. It will help you in the learning process. So it's something, a tool to use for sure. But what is the one major issue, the 800 pound Python in the room that you may not have noticed? The main issue here is that I knew what questions to ask chat GPT. I gave it specific instructions and these questions and instructions that I gave chat GPT were dependent on my knowledge of writing Python code or my knowledge of coding in general, programming in general. You just saw in Python what was generated by chat GPT. You can ask the same question of chat GPT with JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, PHP, Ruby, Perl and many other languages, and you're going to get a similar response. Why? Because as I've been teaching for years, once you've learned one modern programming language, you've learned 80, 90% of many others. Anyhow, the major point to take away from this, though chat GPT is and will be a useful tool once they get it up and running smoothly, the reason I did screenshots is because a lot of times you go to log on, it's overloaded, so it's hard to get in sometimes. Once they get that whole thing going, it will be a useful tool for learning, but you're gonna have a base of you're gonna to have to have some sort of base of knowledge to begin with, so that you can ask the right questions. And it'll also be a good tool to uh, perhaps write boilerplate code. Again, you need that prerequisite that prerequisite is that you're gonna to have to understand what you are doing. For those who are scared that chat GPT or the, or other AI will replace coders, they're missing a huge point. You're going to have to know what questions to ask, number one. And then when you do get the code, assuming that it's well written, and I've heard a lot of people say that the code can be not necessarily very good, but let's assume it writes good code. You're still going to need to know how to implement it, how to use it properly. A lot of the fear with regards to chat GPT and other AI tools, which you hear about from people who are saying, ah, oh, it's the end of coding. The vast majority of these people, if not all of them, are clearly not professional developers or coders. They don't understand the process. I can see how a beginner or somebody who's just has a very superficial understanding, maybe they've done a bunch of tutorials somewhere, but they haven't really built anything. They're not professionals. I can understand how those people might misinterpret chat GPT's functionality as a killer of full-time developers. Let me put it this way. You have to think of chat GPT like a power tool, like a power saw, for example. So a carpenter, to use that analogy, a carpenter will see the power saw as just a tool to speed up the process. Somebody who doesn't know anything about carpentry will see the power saw as a replacement for carpenters. Same thing with this. So don't worry about chat GPT. Use it as a learning tool. Use it to maybe learn a little bit more, but you still need that fundamental knowledge to use it effectively. My name is Uncle Steph, and I run the UncleSteph.com mentoring program and boot camp. If you want to learn how to code, you want to learn to take your coding skills to the next level, check out my 
very unique and flexible boot camp. It allows you to learn at your own pace, whether it takes you six months to get through the material, 12 months, it doesn't matter. The cost is the same for you. And about the cost, it's a fantastic price. You get the best of both worlds. You get all the advantages of distance self-paced learning, and you get all the advantages of personalized tutoring and live support which we have. All right, take a look below, unclesteph.com. And I also have my solo learn courses, links below. You can also join my newsletter, links below, and a whole bunch of other stuff. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.